Hi everyone, this is Anand from Team Amiboids and in today's video we are going to talk about how you can embed your Confluence content inside of your web or mobile applications with almost no coding required. On my screen, you should see the Atlassian marketplace listing of our app embedder for Confluence. You can install the app on your Confluence cloud instance from in here or you can even do that from within the manage apps page inside of the Confluence page. All right, let's begin. Now, once you have the app installed, you can navigate to any of the Confluence spaces which you want to embed inside of your web or mobile application and navigate to space settings. Inside of space settings, you should find the integrations area wherein you'll find embedder for Confluence. Just click on that link and it will bring you to the embedder for Confluence configuration screen, right? So embedder app is going to be available on each one of the spaces on your Confluence cloud instance. Obviously, whether you want to embed the app or not, that's totally up to you. You can configure it according to your needs. Right here, you'll see um, there is already a widget. So we call these embeddable um, or rather the embeddable areas as widgets, right? So in this video, we are going to do the entire detailed demo. So we'll create a widget. We'll show you how you can embed those widgets inside of your web or mobile applications as well. So let's begin. Let's click on add widget. So here you'll see a bunch of settings. First, let's look at these settings. The one at the top, it says common for all widget types. So there are three types of widgets. You'll have floating panel widget, a pop-up widget, and an inline embed widget. Now let me show you an example of how these look like. Right, so we have this live demo page that you can access from the marketplace listing as well. You'll see all the three types of widgets available on this page. First one is this floating panel. It's available from this button that's available at the bottom right corner. It can be accessed from here. Then you have the inline embed, which is visible in this area. Right. So it almost feels like it is a part of the actual page while it is not this section, this, this widget, which is scrolling at the moment, it's coming from the confluence space. And then you have the pop-up widget. When you, when you click on that button, it opens the confluence content inside of this pop-up. So we are going to look at all these three variations, how to configure them from in here. So let's start, let's call this dummy widget, right? Uh, it's not going to be visible inside of your widget, so you can name it according to your needs. Now, whether do you want the Confluence content to be searchable? If so, you can have it turned on, which is by default, or you can turn it off as well. Now, what should be the placeholder text look like? Now I've used search the knowledge base. You can change it. Obviously that, that meets your need. And then you have a very important configuration that we call as landing page or default widget page. So here, what you can do is you can choose any of the confluence pages within this space and make it as the default landing page. So if I'll go back to the live demo and I'll show you what I mean by the default page. So when I click on this widget, I land on this specific page. This is a page. This is a confluence page that is served as the landing page. So you can create a dedicated page that is supposed to be used as a landing page inside of your widgets. So that's what we have done. This is nothing but a confluence page. I'll show you the confluence page in a moment. But if you 
keep it empty. If you do not have a default widget page, then essentially the, um, the, the landing page is not going to have any content. It will be a blank canvas and then you have to search and then you'll see the results. So it's a, we, we always recommend to have a default widget page configured. Uh, let me find out the one that we have created. I'll call it getting started. Yes, that's the one we have created. Now you can dictate the scope of search results, whether it, is, it should be the entire space or whether it should be restricted to the children of a specific page that you choose here. Right now, I'll keep it to the entire space. And then you have this next configuration that says display page titles as links that open in new tab. Now, what that means here, like I said, this is a confluence play, a confluence page, right? Now, if I click on this or this small icon here, it basically opens up that page in a different tab. If you want to have this functionality in place, you can keep this configuration turned on. Major reason for having it here is um, in some cases, our customers do not make the confluence space publicly accessible. In such situations, it does not make sense to have it turned on because since the customer user is not going to have access to your confluence, even if they click on it and land on this page, they'll basically see the login area which they cannot log in into, right? So that's the core use case it tries to address. And then here you have show additional button in footer, right? So I'll go back to the live demo once again, and this is what it refers to. The contact us button that you see at the bottom, that's what it refers to. By default, it is turned off, but if you switch it on, you'll be asked for further customizations. So what do you call it? contact us, button URL, and so on. Visibility rules, I'll just leave them for a separate video. We'll move on and look at the look and feel for floating panel and pop-up. So for now, I'll just navigate or rather put up the button URL to our support portal. Then what should the widget launcher look like? Should it be a question mark icon, info icon, custom text? So right now, um, if, you, if you recall the demo, I had help set up as the custom text. You can even have it as a question mark icon, info icon, or custom text. You can also decide was the size of the widget launcher button, large, medium, small. And these configurations apply to both floating panel as well as the pop-up widget. Then you can further um, change the look and feel of the entire widget itself, right? You can change it so that it merges seamlessly with your branding, with your website, with your mobile app. I'll just use the default once. You can change it anywhere um, at any point in time when you want, even after you have created the widget. Now, specifically for floating panel, you have a couple of additional configurations. Do you want the widget to be expanded by default? If you turn this on, when the page loads, user does not need to click on the help button. The widget automatically appears and then user needs to close it. By default, this one is turned off. You can also have the widget with full height and you can also set up the width of the widget. I'll keep this to default as well. I'll move the video a little so that I can access the lower area for configurations. Now specific for inline embed. Do you want the header to be displayed in the inline embed? Do you want the footer to be displayed? Do you want the iframe border to be displayed? I want the iframe border to be displayed. So I'll just click on save. And once you save, the configurations, you'll see a success message. The page will reload. And on the right hand side, you should see three different JavaScript snippets available to you. Each one of the snippets. So I'll go back to the dummy widget.
and you'll notice there is a separate code for floating panel separate code for inline embed and another one for pop-up right so you can just copy any one of these and test them out let's do one thing let's copy the floating panel code and i've opened the js fiddle code playground right i'll move around the video again and put up the javascript snippet inside of the html now when i run the content or the code you'll see the help button appears when i click on it i see the landing page and the widget i can search for it i can make any customizations and so on right fairly straightforward now let's do another thing let's copy the inline embed and let's try and run it inside of the js fiddle so this is what you are going to do at the end of the day you are going to provide this javascript snippet to your developer and they'll just insert it across all of the pages at once wherever the widget is supposed to be accessible right so this is the inline embed just to confirm that this is really in line i'm going to add a header called hello world and run it again all right you'll notice hello world so i had turned on the um what do you call it the iframe border that's why you can clearly tell the difference between this iframe and the hello world text if i switch off the border you'll you won't be able to figure out that this is coming from confluence and this is natively available on the page and then finally you have the third one which is a pop up right again you follow the similar procedure you come to the html area in js fiddle run the code once again now when i click on it it appears as a pop up right so i can just go in click on any of the search results to get the search content or rather the page content in front of me i can search let's say i want to search for triggers and i'll be able to find the relevant search results so you follow the exact same procedure inside of your web or mobile applications and you should be good to provide the hands on support to your customers where they are right inside of your apps hope that was helpful thank you